Yo, if a cat person and a dog person can find common ground, there might still be some hope left in this world. Hi, I'm Weekly, and today we'll be talking about Chainsaw Man Episode 3. Let me just get this out of the way now. This is the best episode yet, and I just can't believe what I'm witnessing with these fights. Although for full transparency, I already knew this episode was going to deliver, and that's for two reasons. Number one, this is the fight that I remember the most from the few chapters of the manga that I had read. And two, I was expecting that iconic shot from the trailer with Denji's chainsaw spawning out of his head. This moment, and really the whole scene, was just as raw as I hoped it would be. Now, I don't know what manga readers are saying about these episodes because I'm avoiding them for the most part, or at least until the season's over and then I decide to catch up to the manga manga myself, but from what I've been seeing from like these pure anime to manga comparison posts, I assume they're happy. I mean, the setup for this fight is just so perfectly timed. Let's let's get into the structure real quick. This episode starts with a bit of bleed over from the last. Denji and Power are in the middle of what feels like a passive aggressive warning from Makima about acting too hastily on that sea cucumber devil. Now we already knew from the last episode that these two were gonna have some trouble getting along, but once Power tries deflecting the blame onto Denji here, it cements their mutual discontent. But just to really drill it in, Power tells us straight up that devils have a hard time liking humans in the first place. I also just find it funny how clearly guilty power is here by looking at everyone's body language in the shot. But the real start of this episode is the vending machine scene. It plays out like a villain of the week setup. I mean, yeah, Denji's had his goal locked in already, but in this moment, he has the means to get it. Power's reaction is everything here, and that's all thanks to her voice actress, because like, this devil child voice she's been using to portray her riled up has been perfect so far. And you just know it's not going to be overdone anytime soon because there's versatility in her portrayal. Power's upset, malicious, and defeated voices are all vastly different from one another. Even her flashback voice is done differently. The fact that Maki's meeting with her bosses while these two bozos are out getting into the same exact trouble that she just warned them about is absolutely perfect. It makes Hayakawa's skepticism of Denji even more entertaining. I joked all about the background captures I was able to grab last episode, but these in-between shots really do help build the scenes up and make them feel like there's way more to understand about this world. Not only does it work well for transitions, but even the simpler stuff like the outward pan of this door combined with the sudden change in noise makes things feel a lot more ominous. Which is fitting because Makima's giving us this whole exposition on potential devil power levels and how fear affects them. It kind of reminds me of Jujutsu Kaisen's curses, which is funny because Gojo's also the team leader that's subjected to scolding by his higher-ups. And before we know it, Denji and Power have made it to the middle of nowhere. I wasn't too hyped about Batman's appearance at first, but after a second watch, I realized it was just this shot of him looking a little too derpy. Everything else is scary and ugly enough though. Just before they get into it, there's a brief yet effective series of flashbacks linking Denji to power through their mutual companion bonding, which I found very sweet especially since the song in the flashback does sound a lot like the one from the Pochita flashback in episode one. I'm also just realizing this now, but you have Denji, a human who, you know, found love for a devil, versus Power, a devil who found love for a... shit. It's funny because Denji's already motivated enough by his shallow goal to complete this rescue, but now he and the viewer have enough context for his actions, which I found kind of neat. If this trick right here is how the rest of the series decides to motivate Denji, then I'm going to have a lot of fun following him. My only gripe with this whole episode is how Power didn't realize Denji was half devil and that he would taste horrible. I guess he's not the only one with a one-track mind. Oh no, wait, I have two gripes. The second one is that I don't know Japanese yet. If you can, rewatch this fight with the subs turned off because it's so much more entertaining. It wasn't until this fight that I fell in love with Denji's character design, although that also might just be the Pochita bias. The episode ends with Denji and the anime community getting their third W because not only have all of these episodes been bangers, but we've also gotten three different endings. Nah, but what the hell are you doing to us? What can I say? The show is just really good. Now I have to go back and check myself after all the chatter about Bleach adapting too many chapters per episode and notice that this episode covers 3.5 chapters, just like the last episode. I would have guessed like two and a half chapters per episode, but this is great. It feels like we finally have, in Denji's own little weird way, uh, an anime protagonist. Anyway, that's all I got for now. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. I will uh, see you soon. Be safe. Bye.